Hey, welcome to edX world. In this video, we're going to see an example on bank reconciliation statement. The entire IGCSE syllabus has already been covered. You can find all the lessons in the IGCSE accounting playlist. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I will be uploading many more videos on IGCSE accounting where I'll be solving examples so that you find it easy to analyze the questions and do it in the exam. When you see the question, I expect you to pause the video, solve the question on your own and then check for the solution in the video. This is the only way you can eventually start getting your answers right. So in this video, I have one exam style question for you and four MCQs that will be shown at the end of the video. The answers to the MCQs will be there in the description box. Solve those MCQs also and check the answers from the description box. So let's begin this video and this is the question I have for you. A cash book is given for the trader. Bank statement is also given for the first week of May 2021. Some additional information is given. So whenever you get a question like this, first look for all the common amounts that are present both in the cash book and the bank statement. So here I'm going to compare the debit side of the cash book with the credit side of the bank statement and the credit side of the bank statement with the debit side of the cash book. I will be taking all the common amounts. Once you're done with that, you will realize that there are certain amounts that are either there only in the cash book, not in the bank statement or they're in the, they're in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. And these are the reasons for the difference in the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. The cash book balance on 7th May is 230 overdraft balance, but the bank statement balance is a positive balance of 1,443. So these balances are different and the transactions that are not present in both the books are the reasons for the difference. If you remember from my video on bank reconciliation statement, I had given you a chart wherein we divided all the reasons for differences under four categories. Timing differences, transactions that are present in the bank statement but not in the cash book, errors in the cash book and errors in the bank statement. The transactions that are present in the bank statement and the errors in the cash book will be rectified or will be reconciled through updation of the cash book. We will pre prepare an updated cash book. And the timing differences and the errors in the bank statement will be reconciled through a bank reconciliation statement. So let us go ahead and prepare our updated cash book first. In our updated cash book, we need to look for amounts that are present in the bank statement, not but not in the cash book. So if I go through my bank statement, I can see that the miscellaneous expense 200 is not there in the cash book. But you also have to understand that the opening balance of the cash book was 584, whereas the opening balance of the bank statement was 384. And after this transaction of 200 was debited in the bank statement, the bank balance now became 584. So do you think this 200 should be appearing anywhere in the updated cash book or the bank reconciliation statement? The answer is no, because this 200 was a reason for a difference in the previous period. You could see that there is a difference in the balances. 200 was a reason for difference in the previous period. In this period, the bank has debited that amount and the balance is reconciled now. So this 200 will not be considered for reconciliation in the current period. Then we have insurance, a standing order payment of $60 that will go in the updated cash book. We have interest of $30 again that will go on the cash book. If I come to the credit column of the bank statement, I have Gordon in bracket transfer. Basically, they want to tell you that this is a credit transfer from customer will go in the updated cash book and we have a rent credited to the account of 150. This could have gone in the updated cash book. But if you read the adjustment number two given here, it says that the bank had credited this amount of 150 by mistake in the trader's business bank account instead of a personal bank account. So basically, this is an error by the bank. Any error by the bank is never copied in our updated cash book. We will not put incorrect entries in our updated cash book. Instead, we will inform the bank about this mistake so that this can be reversed in the next statement. But meanwhile, this will go in the bank reconciliation statement until the bank reverses the amount. So let's start preparing our cash book. We will start with our balance brought down. Now here students get confused. They will start with a balance brought down of 584, but that's not correct you have to start with the previous closing balance of the cash book, which is balance brought down of 230 on 7th May. So I'll start with my balance brought down on 7th May as $230. I will be crediting the 
standing order insurance payment of $60 to the cash book. Then the interest paid to the bank will be credited again to the cash book of $30. Transfer from customer Gordon will be recorded on the debit side of the cash book for $60. I would have closed my cash book here, but I can see on the credit side of my cash book, it says on 5th May drawings of 250. But if you go through your adjustment number one, it says that the trader had withdrew this $250 for personal expense from the cash box and not from the business bank account. But when recording the transaction in the cash book, by mistake, it was put in the bank column. Hence, this is an error in the cash book. This will be rectified by reversing this transaction in our bank column of the cash book. So I will record this entry on the debit side of the bank column of the cash book to reverse this error. Once we are done with all these transactions, we can now balance our updated cash book. Since the debit is greater than the credit, we'll take a total on the debit side of 7,010. We will get a balance carried down on the credit side of $390. This balance as per updated cash book will be used in preparation of your bank reconciliation statement. That will be the starting point of the preparation of bank reconciliation statement. So let us start with our bank reconciliation statement. Now in a bank reconciliation statement, you will have two kind of transactions. One is the timing differences. Timing differences will always be there in the cash book because these are transactions that have been recorded in the cash book, but not yet by the bank. And, and basically there are two type of timing differences transactions. One is the unpresented check where the business has issued a check to a supplier, but the supplier has not yet presented to the bank for payment. And hence amount is not yet debited in our bank account. And the other transaction is the uncredited deposits, wherein the, wherein the business has received the check. We've deposited the check in the bank, but the check clearing process has taken time and the, we've not yet received the amount in our bank statement. So these two transactions will appear in the bank reconciliation statement. And apart from that, we also have a bank error adjustment number two that will also go in the bank reconciliation statement. So let's start preparing a bank reconciliation statement. We will start with our balance as per updated cash book of $390. Then I would add my unpresented check paid to Francis on 6th May of 1563. This will be added in the bank reconciliation statement. Apart from that, the error made by the bank of 150 rent will also be added in the bank statement because we are trying to reconcile our cash book balance with the bank statement balance. Because of this rent being credited to our bank account by mistake, our bank balance has increased in value. To match our cash book to our bank statement balance, we will also have to add the amount in our cash book balance. We'll have to add the amount to our cash book balance for the timing so that we can reconcile the balances. So let's add this rent credited of 150 by mistake with the bank also in our bank reconciliation statement and we get a total of 1713 in the last column which will be added in total to the cash book balance. We will have to deduct our uncredited deposits which is cash sales of $660. So when we start with our 390 updated cash book balance, we to that we add 1713 and we deduct 660. What we get at the end is the balance as per our bank statement which is 1443. When the balance of bank statement as per the reconciliation statement matches with the actual balance of the bank statement, you can say that all the errors and all the transactions that were reasons for differences between the balances have been considered. Whatever we could update in our cash book, we've updated. For transactions, we cannot do anything for the timing. We have recorded in our reconciliation statement and we will wait for the banker to either put these transactions in the bank statement or reverse the errors. Here are some MCQs for you. Try solving them and look for the answers in the description box. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. If you have any doubts regarding this topic or any part of the syllabus, please feel free to comment in the comment box below. I'll be very happy to solve your doubts. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you for being there and I'll see you soon.